In this problem, I need to evaluate this expression, the inverse cosine of negative one-half, and it says I cannot use a calculator. So negative a-half is one of the values on the unit circle, so here's my unit circle. And often the easiest way to evaluate these is set it equal to a variable. I'm going to pick the variable theta, and then I want to write out what this means. If the inverse cosine is equal of negative one-half is equal to theta, that means the cosine of theta has to equal negative one-half. And remember, with inverse trig functions, there have to be restrictions. And what's the restrictions on the inverse cosine? It says theta has to lie between zero and pi radians. So somehow my angle has to lie between 0 and pi. So I'm restricted to quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So those are the inherent restrictions built into the inverse cosine function. So remember the cosine of an angle is equal to the x coordinate on the unit circle. So that means I'm looking for an x coordinate of negative a half. Well, remember, in quadrant 1, all trig functions are positive, so I can't be there. But now in quadrant 2, is the cosine of an angle negative? Yes. So all I have to do is look around my x values and look for negative a half. OK, so here I have negative a half is the x value. And that is the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Therefore, I know that theta has to equal 2 pi over 3. Notice there is only one answer to an inverse trig function problem. That's what the restrictions mean. A lot of students want to get this problem and say, oh, the answer is 2 pi over 3. The cosine is also equal to a negative a half down here and they want to say it's also equal to 4 pi over 3. That would be wrong as there is only one answer based on the restrictions. So remember an inverse trig function, you have to look at the restrictions. You can only have at most one answer. So in this case, what's the answer? Theta equals 2 pi over 3.